one of there has pointed out that's a very different picture from yesterday when officers welcomed the migrants with smiles and reassurances. Well, Hungary itself has rejected criticism of its own border controls yesterday when tear gas was fired, saying officers were facing an armed mob. Let's uh, take a closer look at Hungary's response to the crisis now. With me is the Hungarian ambassador to the UK, Mr. Peter Zabadeji. And I, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. And thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, I just want to pick up a comment that the UNHCR, we've just heard uh, from there, uh, the head of the UNHCR, saying that I am appalled at the callous and in some cases illegal actions of the Hungarian authorities in recent days. They deny entry to and uh, arrest, summarily rejecting and returning refugees using disproportionate force on migrants. What do you say to that? Well, I think it's a, it's a very unfair uh, accusation. Um, Hungary has actually gone out of its way to prepare for the, the final closing of its, of its borders um, that has been underway now for, for, for weeks. And, and actually, um, we're pleased that um, since Monday, uh, the actual numbers of, of illegal border crossings has decreased from about 9,000 in the beginning of the week down to below 400. But to answer your question, when, when we have put together the new, the new law, uh, which is now in place as of Tuesday, we made it a, an extra point to make sure that we help those who are truly vulnerable. So first of all, we put in place um, the well, let me stop you there, because just looking zones. at these pictures yesterday, the water cannon, tear gas, they're, they're limited in terms of their targeting ability, and many innocent civilians, some of them desperate, will have been caught up in that. Yes, well, that's what I was just coming to say, that, you know, these people have a, have a choice, they have an alternative, and that is to, to come to those transit zones, uh, which Hungary has put in place by the border, where the application process for asylum is, is now uh, being accelerated. And if they come to those points, their asylum requests will actually be processed uh, quickly. Now, what happened yesterday is, is very, very unfortunate. I mean, as you can see in those pictures, there was a hostile attack on Hungarian police. And, and, and I have to say that the, the response from, from those, those police has been uh, measured and, and professional. A hostile attack. What sort of people do you think carried that out? Because from the pictures we're looking at, many of them carrying babies, young children. They didn't look hostile. They looked very vulnerable. Um, actually, it is quite horrifying what, what, what some of these aggressive migrants are, are, are doing. Actually, most of them were, were young men. But some of them actually used small children um, as shields. And, and, I mean, most horrifyingly, two of them were actually thrown across the fence. And so Hungarian ambulance had to take them to hospital and take care of them. Two children? Two children from the Serbian side were thrown across the fence. It's... it's horrifying. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's horrifying actually... if it was because that was the most desperate act of a parent who wanted to th get their child into a safe zone, if you like. I mean, there are always but, two sides to a story. Well, yes, and that's what I'm trying to say. They didn't have to go and attack the police in order to get into Hungary. There are these transit zones which are in place. There are two of them along the border, which, which is open for asylum seekers. Do you understand the confusion caused by a sudden change in policy? People head to a point where for, for weeks it's been safe to cross. Yes. You change, your authority changes its mind. They don't understand, they perhaps don't hear that, and then they arrive and the rules have changed. Can you understand the frustration? I, I can understand that, and, and I think part of what happened yesterday was sort of a, a, a test of the resolve of the Hungarian authorities. Most by, by whom? By the migrants? By, by the migrants. I, most of them actually did then, if they were truly intent on, on asking for asylum, they did go to those, to those centers. Um, it's, it, they, everyone has, has a choice. What about the, the... We're looking at live pictures on the uh, Croatia-Serbia border as the problem moves away, if you like, fr from your border, which presumably was the aim of, of the action you took in the first place. But what about a European, a pan-European approach? I, I've just been speaking to the ambassador 
from Serbia saying he felt countries have been let down by a lack of European approach. Do you feel let down as a country? Uh, we do. We do. Um, we, we think that the, the, the issue, the problem, has to be addressed at, at source. And so there are really four things that Hungary would like to achieve um, to, to alleviate the situation. First of all, the place from where the refugees are leaving, Syria and, and, and other places of conflict, have to, have to find a way to, to, um, to cease the, those, those, those conflicts. And, and clearly you, you require uh, U.S. and Russian and, and Arab countries to do that. Secondly, Hungary would like to see aid given to those countries where the refugees are, are coming to, um, specifically Turkey, Jordan, and, and Lebanon. Thirdly, uh, we need to help those frontline European countries, Greece and Italy, so that uh, they can properly police their, their, their borders. And finally, the, the, the human traffickers, the multi-billion dollar business, uh, need to be eradicated. But as far as the Hungarian government is concerned, they've had enough. The Hungarian government is doing what it can to, to enforce the EU regulations which it has uh, adopted in such a way that it really takes care of the truly vulnerable. And what, by that I mean anybody coming into a, a transit zone who is a minor, who is sick, who is an elderly person, or is a family with small children, they are allowed through. And they are then taken to immigration camps, they're taken to uh, these reception points, and they're, and they're taken care of with, with food and water, shelter, um, health care. Let me pick you up on that, because what is your understanding of who these people are at your border crossings? Are they asylum seekers, desperate people fleeing for their lives, or are they something else? Well, I, um, obviously, they're, they're, you probably have, have each, but I think um, the distinction between the two is not being made. So clearly Hungary is saying that we will accept true refugees at some point down the line, and, and in fact that's what the asylum process is, is, is all about. But it's, it's really these economic mig migrants that, that Hungary has a problem with. Very briefly, where, where do you think the, the buck stops? Is it with Angela Merkel? Why is there no pan-European, sensible, if it's possible, approach to this? Well, that, that's a really good question. We've been trying to understand uh, what, what the problem is. And we've, Hungary has actually been at the forefront of, um, of getting the attention of European leaders to, to this problem. Hungary was very first uh, last year during the summer and earlier this year to highlight the, the, the problem of mass migration. Let me just put it into context. There were 200,000 border crossings, illegal border crossings on the southern border of Hungary just this year. That's bigger than the second biggest city in Hungary called Debrecen. It is huge. So not only cannot, can Hungary not cope with it, but I'm sure Europe cannot either. Uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, but Peter Sabadeji, I'm most grateful for your time this afternoon, the Hungarian ambassador. Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much.